Great. Okay, um, Assalamualaikum and a very good evening everyone. Welcome back to MMU Startup Challenge uh, for this today's session. We are going to hear from a very bright person which is um, our Miss Rauda. So she was going uh, to do some sharing with us um, regarding of her journey and her experience. And I hope at the end of this um, session, you guys can actually um, ask her a few guidelines on how to be like her or to build a company just like her and anything else. So um, a bit of um, introduction of this speaker. Uh, Rauda was recently listed on Forbes 30 under 30, 2022. Is it true, Rauda? Yeah, cool. All right. Um, so Rauda is the CEO and founder of Accelerate Global. She was the president and team leader of a UK-based social enterprise for three years, managing 104 members, wow, from different countries and macro-managing five social enterprises. She was the first Asian Muslim female to be appointed to the role by the board of advisors and was the first to win the Enactus President and Team Leader of the Year Award in the UK. After successfully leading her team as one of the top three Enactus social enterprises in the United Kingdom. In 2018, she was called by Lord Michael Hastings to the Parliament of UK to speak and discuss issues surrounding youth and unemployment and brought home the International Student of the Year Award. She was also called to speak at the University of Essex United Nations Human Rights Conference in the UK about child's right to education. So um, another big thing to know about her is Rauda is the youngest board member ever appointed to the advisory board of curriculum develop of development of the Polytechnic and College Community in Malaysia, overseeing the model development for the Certificate of Business Operation. Recently, she was invited to speak alongside the former president of Timor-Leste and Nobel Peace Prize laureate, Dr. Jose Ramos Horta on ethical leadership in Asia, as well as being invited to speak at a policy dialogue organized by the European Union support to higher education in the Asian regions and the Asian Youth Interfaith Camp organized by the Ministry of Youth and Sports, the Republic of Indonesia. Ah, so long, your introduction. <laughs> so guys, uh, this is a very um, interesting people to meet. So uh, I hope you guys can hear about her um, experience and get ready for your bullets to us at the end of the session. Okay, uh, Radha, you will have like 30 minutes with them and I hope they can um, gain some benefits and um, maybe to share your experience with us. Without further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm still very shy whenever people read my profile. I do feel that it's really long. Um, you know, my, I think it's, it might be wise, you know, for, for my team to shorten that. I, mean, it's <laughs> I know, right? It's a bit too long. Uh, okay, but okay. thank you. I'm very yeah. humbled to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me here. I'm actually super excited to start the session, uh, especially sharing on fundraising, you know, on the equity crowdfunding that I went through last year because it was nothing but easy. Okay, so it was so grueling, it was crazy. I didn't even know that I could make it on the other side of the road, but we did, so that's fantastic. And I'm excited to share with all of you. Um, I do have slides to share, that's okay. Okay, good. Yeah, let me just quickly share my screen. Uh, just mind me because we don't use Zoom at work. So I might be a little bit, um, yeah, sorry, give me a second. Let me, let me try, okay? No so worries, I, we're uh, all here to help you. I can share my screen, right, perfect. Oh, there yep. you go, great. Can okay. you see this? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I will present slowly, sorry. There you go. Okay. Ta-da, can you see it? Yep. Okay, yep. super. Great, so let's begin. So equity crowdfunding, Accelerate Global, and I. So I did include I there. Uh, I am the founder and also the CEO of Accelerate Global. So I feel like there is a need to share that founder's journey as well. Because um, when you're the founder of, of your own startup, of your own social enterprise, of your own company, you do have an emotional attachment to it. And so there's also that, you know, you've got to have the ability to also manage your emotions when it comes to that. Does 
well, right? So the, the good and bad to make sure that um, you're not either too, too invested, but you're also not not invested. So basically striking that balance is really important, especially when you go for fundraising. Now, to begin with, I feel like it's important for me to first introduce um, who exactly is Accelerate, uh, what we do, in other words, and, and, and so, so basically to give you a bit of background before I talk about our journey of, of basically securing that funding last year. So Accelerate Global is a social enterprise uh, and our main bread and butter is we run upskilling programs, uh, particularly uh, with the underprivileged and the marginalized youth as well. And our aim is actually to develop and help them uh, start a business from scratch, from zero capital, uh, using whatever they have within their community and within their resources. So our bread and butter is upskilling programs. Our signature program would be our entrepreneurship and our career programs as well. Some of the um, questions that I've gotten is why do we choose to provide upskilling programs? Why did we choose that to be our main product, our main service? So I believe, uh, and the team believes as well on this, that we believe when it comes to tackling the issue of youth unemployment, when it comes to developing youth as who are independent, who are self-sustainable, uh, when it comes to building the next generation of not just uh, leaders, but also the next generation of responsible leaders, it's important um, that we develop and we provide them with all the skills and knowledge required so that they can take life head on. So it's not really uh, an easy path, I must say, you know, because when you talk about providing upskilling programs, the impact that you're creating is something that you don't just see instantaneously. It's something that you see right at the end, essentially. Um, it's grueling, but it's definitely worth it. Now, these programs um, that I've just mentioned for the entrepreneurship, as well as uh, for the career program as well, are all actually built in-house, which you will see in a bit, because uh, it is a part of our journey of actually securing that funding as well. But basically, in, uh, in, in shorter terms, in short terms, easy to understand, we're a social enterprise, we run upskilling programs. Our main aim is to, to tackle unemployment by giving the youthers, especially the underprivileged and the marginalized, the knowledge and the skills they need so that they can take life um, head on. Now, given that we are a social enterprise, uh, we have the impact side, we also have the financial bit as well, meaning we must generate revenue, we must generate profit, and we must ensure um, that we're not only relying on donations, on grants, and that we ourselves, um, you know, we are financially sustainable. So basically, it's a, it's a challenge because, you know, you're running both at the same time, but um, it's a challenge that we all believe it's worth it, especially when you look at the end goal and especially when you look at the impact that, um, you know, we're all creating. Now, going to the story, which is very interesting. So what I've done here, as you can see on this page, um, I've actually dissected our timeline from 2019 when I founded Accelerate and then later on you'll see up until this year, which is 2022, which also includes the time when we decided to, to go for equity crowdfunding. I feel like this story is somewhat vital because it kind of gives you guys a bit of background on why I decided to fundraise, why I decided to go for ECF. Um, and I think the most important ingredient here is uh, when did I decide to go for ECF and why did I decide and that in that particular time frame uh, for us to go for equity crowdfunding. So fun fact, I actually started Accelerate with zero capital. It was quite crazy. Uh, I graduated from the UK. I was a JPE scholar. So the only savings I had was basically from scholarship money. Um, and, and, and good thing though, I did save some uh, from my first year of studies. And so when I graduated and I came back to Malaysia, I did have that savings to sort of, you know, um, live in other words, or bootstrap. But I did not have enough money to pump in or to invest in my own uh, social business, in my own social enterprise. I did not want uh, to bother my mother at the time. Uh, some people did think I was crazy because I was receiving all these job offers. And then I told 
them and myself that you know what maybe not I'm gonna start accelerate so I started with zero capital uh, it was really interesting because in the year 2019 what I decided to do was I decided to validate uh, the business idea the business model first without actually um, going to investors uh, yet now at the time uh, I decided to to do that because standing in front of a bunch of investors, uh, especially VCs, right, um, telling them that we've got no traction, we've got no product, the business has not been validated, uh, I was not basically negotiating or pitching in a position of strength. Um, it was merely selling the dream, right? But as, as I guess as a law graduate, because I'm all about evidence, I was, I was really, I really wanted to showcase the results, at least some of the pilot programs that we have done to prove to the investors that, hey, um, you know, you should invest in our company because we have the results that, that we're claiming to be making. So what I did in 2019 was I remember running a monthly workshop. So if you can see on this slide, on the left side here, that was me who decided to say, I'm going to go register, accelerate as a sole prop first. So I did, you know, so that was my first picture where I got the receipt, paid whatever I needed to pay, which was 60 ringgit at the time, uh, registered accelerate as a sole proprietorship so I can run, um, you know, officially. And, and validate that business model. So although we started, I started at the time, you know, as a solopreneur, because I didn't have money to pay my team, obviously, or actually recruit anybody. I remember in July 2019, as you can see here on the right side, uh, I actually ran uh, our first workshop at zero cost. So the venue, I got it for free. Um, food as well, I got it for free and actually charged a small fee uh, of 30 ringgit to, to gather some of the people that might be interested uh, in our career and personal growth workshop. Now, thankfully, praise be to God and alhamdulillah, it was a hit. So I remember we sold out the tickets. Well, the space was only could only fit 20 people, uh, sold out 20 tickets and actually made our first 600 ringgit in profit. So it was full on profit because obviously, well, the only cost was me and my effort and my sweat. But when it comes to monetary, it was it was a profit because we didn't spend a dime. So the first six months of Accelerate was really all about creating, improving our courses, improving our programs, sort of gaining traction because clearly don't have much capital, right? But what's really good was it worked. It worked tremendously well. Um, and so it brought me, you know, an avenue and basically opportunities to refine our courses. So in that 2019, because I understand that my focus uh, was validating and making sure that our programs work, uh, I actually managed to assemble a few advisors to come in who are industry experts. We've got Chief HR, I mean, former Chief HR of Malaysia Airlines. Uh, right now, we've got the former CEO of MDEC, who's also the board of uh, Capital A, uh, previously known as Air Asia as well. So they all came together and we all basically built that courses, refine it. Every single workshop that we ran uh, from July 2019, because from that 600, we then ran the next one and doubled the profit and so on and so forth, which also allowed us uh, to improve on our courses as well. So all these courses that you are seeing on the screen right now, we've got the entrepreneurship, the career, and the personal growth courses on Accelerate are actually all built in-house. Uh, that 2019 was a year where we just decided, you know what, let's focus our energy on really making sure that the programs that, that, that we, we, we push out works and actually, you know, is, is efficient and is effective. Now, going well, fast forward, right, because I do not have 30 minutes, um, 2019 was all about that. Okay. And then 2020 came and the pandemic came, goodness gracious. So not really a good time because I started in June and then seven, eight months after that, we were in lockdown. Um, but, you know, alhamdulillah, praise be to God, we became a lot more relevant at the time, uh, mainly because we were tackling the issue of youth unemployment. And at the time, uh, I was pitching to education institution, universities, polytechnics, saying that, yes, uh, the main focus of the whole nation at the moment is making sure that the virus does not spread. 
But if you look at one or two years down the line, many more issues will start to emerge. Unemployment, economic recession, at the moment we're facing inflation as basically the outcome of the lockdown. So in 2020, we still continue um, to run our programs, but I really want what I really wanted to share here was the very fact that whatever that we did in 2019, bootstrapping, starting with zero capital, I remember I did not get to pay myself at least for the first four months, five months when I started Accelerate, all that really paid off because I remember uh, in 2020, um, that was when we actually were called by the Polytechnic uh, and College Community of Malaysia to run our program with the B40 youthers in Sarawak. So this was our first sort of big program at the time, uh, which helped us to uh, you know, continue to build our traction and continue to build our legitimacy. Now you'll see how all this makes sense um, when it comes to ECF in a bit, uh, but I just wanted to share that from there, we start to sort of build traction. We empowered 20 B40 Polytechnic youthers. They started their own business and then it sort of continued. Uh, after that, we were then caught by the American Chambers of Commerce. Uh, they gave us our first six figure uh, funding to actually run a program in Sabah with 43 stateless youthers as well. So basically, if you can see, started with nothing, started with really just a small workshop, but we consistently did that until we, we managed to actually make a name of ourselves and actually of the efficacy of our programs. So here, what you're seeing here, basically um, this very happy picture of mine with a mask on, because at the time you cannot take your mask off anywhere. Um, you know, this is basically sort of, um, we, we see this as the result of basically that you know, a few months of just trying to build traction and trying to focus on uh, product development, our product being our uh, upskilling programs, right? So slowly sort of built traction. And from here, we started building more and more impact from this program. We actually developed 43 stateless youthers um, and, and they started their own pineapple jam business, which was really fantastic. And then we continued running more projects. So this was with the Arisan Chow Kit. Um, and this was actually our first corporate funding. So after that Sabah project, we were then approached by PwC Malaysia, um, wanting to fund our program. And they funded this program. We then uh, developed at-risk youthers to become micro-entrepreneurs. As you can see, these are all our graduates who managed to start a business, um, who have generated income as well. So that, that is basically in 2020 and 2021. So what happened was 2019, as you can see, ideation validation, 2022, we built traction. Now in 2021, that's when we actually decided to go for equity crowdfunding. So what happened was we realized that when we reflected back on you know, all the successes that we had, um, all these traction, all these results that we have built, um, in 2021, we started receiving more demand from the university students as an individual. So they were coming to us and they said, we want to enroll in your entrepreneurship program as well. You know, we saw all these youth as well who have became entrepreneurs. So we want to enroll ourselves individually. Is there anything um, for us where we don't have to commit to three months, four months, because our entrepreneurship program is quite long? Is there anything that we can sort of just learn anytime, anywhere? So because of that, um, you know, we decided to sort of, yeah, so this is basically the, the, the story again. But basically, we continue to do this whilst there is there was a demand. But what happened was the last event that we did, there's a bit of an internet lag here, my apologies. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if you can see, but my screen is just, I can't see the pictures anyway. Um, sorry. But so this was actually our last program that we did after we actually decided to say, okay, let's go for the equity crowdfunding. Because in 2021, when we did this project uh, in Sabah um, with the B40 youthers, at the same time, we also had an influx of demand um, whereby some university students, some clubs and associations were coming to us and say um, that we're ready to pay this amount and we would like uh, you to run an entrepreneurship program. Now, when, when we were running this program and when we received that demand from the other end, we realized that it's not just that we do not have 
the resources to actually run it multiple times. Because at the time, um, in 2021, we were a team of two and a half. So it was me, it was our Dini here, our special associate, and we had an intern, um, which I call half because sometimes it's in, sometimes it's not because it was a part-time internship. And it has always been that way since 2019. You know, interns come in and then they go. So it's sometimes we go up to five people, but normally the three are just interns. So we realized that we did not have, uh, you know, that resources we needed. So we were unable to run multiple programs simultaneously because we lack resources. We often lose our market share at the time uh, because we could only run one program at a time because we were a small team. Uh, but last but not least, I wanted to share this point. We realized that the underprivileged and the marginalized youths are really not given uh, the same opportunity to learn. So we were still dependent on corporations to fund us. Of course, that is where the bigger chunk of money comes in because we do have the B2B model. Uh, but we started thinking about what if um, you know, this fund started to run out because at the end of the day, when you get funding from corporations, there's really limited window of beneficiaries that you can target and that you can empower. So how can we make sure that we can provide our entrepreneurship program, our uh, career program, and all of our other courses to as many youths, whilst also impacting many more underprivileged and marginalized youths, right? And that is when uh, we actually decided to refine our solutions. Uh, we thought, let's uh, digitize all of our courses because we already have these courses place them onto our very own e-learning platform. So develop our very own e-learning platform and make it into a subscription-based platform. So meaning all these university students can actually subscribe to our platform, which we have just recently launched, but for every single subscription fee that is paid for, one underprivileged will immediately get access to our programs and our platform as well. Meaning if there's one million subscribers, one million more underprivileged and uh, marginalized youths will be given access to education and to opportunities. So when we've refined the solution, of course, the next thing we did was we went for ECF. Right. Um, and that was in 2021, last year, when we decided uh, in, and we said, OK, um, we've got the refined solutions. We know why we're doing this. We know there is a demand. We know that there's results and there's traction. It's time for us to, you know, open up. It's time for us to go and pitch to the public, basically. So here, what I really want to share is that when it comes to raising funds, when it comes to going and pitching to investors as a founder, as co-founders, or even as a team in any startup, social enterprises or businesses, it's really important that you take a step back and ask yourself, why are you fundraising? If it's merely because, oh, we need the money, I can tell you right off the back, that is not enough, right? The question that you've got to ask yourself is, are you raising this money because you are trying to advance a solution that will have a great impact, not just socially, not just economically, but maybe environmentally as well? Because, you know, there's a lot of emerging businesses and startups out there or social enterprises out there. It's important uh, for investors, at least based on my experience pitching with uh, the ECF investors, they're always looking at what value can you bring to the table aside from just wanting to realize your dream? What is it that make your idea uh, or your solution not just unique, but also meaningful for the society at large? I think that's really important. Um, and understanding that will actually also fuel you throughout the entire ECF journey as well. So I can tell you that my experience was Alhamdulillah and praise be to God, not too uh, stressful. It was stressful, but it's something that 
um, you know, we all anticipate it. So we went for equity crowdfunding for three months. We closed in the period of three months. Uh, we raised above minimum ask. Um, and, and basically now we're, we just launched our e-learning platform. So it's, it really, uh, the reason why I mentioned you need to understand why you're raising fund is because, you know, when you do pitch to investors later on, it's not just about you pitching your business idea as well. It's actually also about the back and forths that you will do. And let me share with you uh, an experience I have. So one of our biggest investors, um, no, not one, the second biggest investor, I remember he texted me um, three weeks before we closed our campaign telling me that, Rauda, I think I'd like to pull out because I want to put that money somewhere else. Um, what, what do you have to say? Maybe you can increase my dividend because um, how I pay my investors is they get 25% dividend every single year if we reach our projected net profit. And I remember really just panicking because, uh, you know, what we need to understand is that because he's the second biggest investor, if he pulls out, we're not going to make the minimum. That means we're going to have to either stretch our equity crowdfunding timeline at the time, which was three months. It has to be four months. Um, or, you know, we're just not, we're not going to make it because with equity crowdfunding, it's all or nothing, right? So what I did uh, was, uh, first of all, I, I asked um, if he was happy to share which company um, he was looking to invest in. Now, uh, now, something about this investor of mine, he's really honest, which I really appreciate. So he actually shared, you know, this is the company so-and-so. Um, reason why I want to invest in this is because the dividend is higher. It can help his children, which is a very fair argument. So what I did was I realized that this company is already a Burhat, right? And I am obviously not a Burhat. And this is our first equity crowdfunding um, you know, exercise. So what I did was I actually took a step back um, and, and I took a stand um, and, and I told him that I understand if you'd like to go and if you'd like to invest in that Burhat company, because I do understand that they have bigger dividend. Uh, but I was very honest with him and I told him that I believe that it's not fair to compare an apple to an orange because there's no way I can give you more dividend when this is our first ECF exercise. I then re-emphasized on the value that he will be bringing to accelerate, not just uh, monetary as well, because he will also be bringing home that impact that we will be able to create as a social enterprise because um, he invested in the company. So what I've done here and what, why I really wanted to share this with all of you is because as founders, sometimes it's very easy for us to get intimidated, right? So when investors say, no, I want, I don't know, this reward, because I do know that you guys are going for a reward basis, right? Or I want higher equity, or I want this, I want that. Um, whilst, yes, we most definitely have to be open to listen, because sometimes there are constructive criticisms out there that we must accept. It's also important to take a stand for your mission, for your company, um, when and if required. And to do that, especially when you do go for a fundraising exercise, is to really understand the value that your company brings to the table. Um, and in my case, in Accelerate's case, uh, we were privileged because we, we, we were on the route of validating and then going for um, the ECF round. So meaning we were negotiating or we were pitching from a position of strength, at least in our case, of course. And I feel like our case is, is required, especially when it comes to upskilling programs. You cannot just say that, let's run this and then you've got no results, right? So that, that's where the strength comes in for Accelerate. But bottom line is, when you go for ECF, you need to understand that value. You need to understand why you're doing it. And last but not least, um, this is very important, it's the honesty that comes in as well. Um, I want to share with, with, with you guys that when we ran for ECF, I was ready to, to you know, struggle a lot more. Uh, but what really helped actually was um, the honesty that we as a team brought to the table when we pitched. 
So we didn't really sell big dreams. We're going to go IPO at this valuation, that valuation, right? So we were really honest in terms of, yes, we are new. This is our first fundraising exercise, you know, but these are our track record. And if you believe in it, come on board. If you do have questions, come on board. And we were also very open to actually share the struggles that we were facing as a team in order to get extra support from the investors. Um, and you will be surprised as to how these investors really appreciate vulnerability. They really appreciate honesty because it's, you know, it's a breath of fresh air, right? So it's not just lies and numbers or, or not lies, I would say projected, right? Um, it's really also honest conversations that you have um, with the investors as well. So in that three months of actually pitching um, for ECF, we add, in, sorry, in that three months of timeline, we actually only pitched once in that three months. And after that one pitch, uh, we, we, had, we, we reached the minimum for pledges. And then it was just time for them to basically put in the money. Um, and then alhamdulillah and praise be to God, it was, it, it was well. So every time people ask me, you know, how come you only pitched once, right? I, I, I believe the key to that was actually the, the honesty that we as a team um, bring to the table as well. So it was like an open conversation. Yes, I pitched, but I'm also here to tell you, um, you know, the, the issues we have at hand, the projected net profit. Why is it not as high perhaps? So, you know, why is it, um, you know, uh, reserved, I'd say, uh, or conservative numbers? And, and why we want to do what we want to do. So yes, uh, those are the things that I actually wanted to share. Um, now, before I, I, I wrap up, I wanted to, to also share that we're so humbly proud as well when we close to the ECF. Uh, we didn't know this, uh, but, but the, the, the uh, ECF provider actually told us this, that last year we were actually one of only three social enterprises that actually have had a successful equity crowdfunding and the only one during COVID-19 pandemic. So it was, a, it was a really humbling experience. We have 69 investors from all over the world. They actually came in July last month for our launch as well. Um, and, and something that I really love about ECF is you have a pool of investors, you know, who, who really have multiple expertise um, and, and they, they can and they will be available for you if you'd like them um, to help basically. So there it is. So um, that was 2021. And then we closed it in November last year, 2022, which is this year. We now use the money to scale up and um, hired our board of directors officially. So you can see we've got four board of directors. We've got uh, Med on the left side. He is currently the CEO of Impact Malaysia under Ministry of Youth and Sports. We've got Claudia, the former Chief HR for Malaysia Airlines. There's Juan Shireen, um, who's the CEO of the and Sajatra and former CEO of MD, uh, sorry, um, of Talent Corp. And then there's Serena, who is the former CEO of MDEC as well. So after the equity crowdfunding, I think this is a, just a little bit more to share with you guys. You also need to know what you do, what you need to do after you raise that money, right? So what's the next step? So for Accelerate, that next step was let's officially hire our board of directors. Let's do the team expansion. As you can see here, this is my team now. Uh, core team, actually, we do have a few more um, that's not a part of the management core team. But this is our core team. So you need to also already have that plan on what you need to do uh, after. And then we launched our e-learning platform that we promised to the investors uh, called Acetication, which is now available both on Apple Store and Google Play Store as well. And we rolled out our one-to-one -one model, you know, so for every subscription fee paid for, one underprivileged will get access to it. We just launched it last month. Uh, right now, it's still going, undergoing marketing. We're also sometimes fixing some bugs. As you know, it's tech. Uh, but uh, I believe we are well underway to impacting more youths. It's really exciting times. Um, happy to share more on this if you guys want, but let, I'll stay on the topic of equity crowdfunding. Um, I think I'll pass it back and maybe if there's any questions from the floor. Yeah. Uh, any questions from the floor, guys, before we um, wrap up for Ronda? Yes, and I think uh, you want to talk, but we cannot hear. Sorry, hello. Can you hear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do have one question. Um. 
how what what is like your one sentence like motivation mo- motivation or inspiration for us wow yes okay. for, for you okay let me maybe answer for me first and okay then okay if you can you can relate okay um, sure. yeah thank you for the question though so my one motivation well let me go back to my slide because it's actually on my slide my one motivation is them it's 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 my graduates it's my beneficiaries if you can see and my screen is up right it's it's you get okay okay just in case so Hanif Erin Afifa these are just the three graduates that we have but seeing them graduate seeing them able to improve their livelihoods uh, it's my biggest and brightest motivation to wake up every single day and and do what I do so I think for you guys Um, I wouldn't say there is one motivation. It's, it's not a one shoe fits all, right? Everyone has their own motivation. And I believe as an entrepreneur, as entrepreneurs, it's really important that you find the one motivation that really connects to you on an emotional level as well. Because entrepreneurship journey is uh, not easy. I'm here smiling, happy, presenting. Is this who I am? <laughs> the team has, has deducted that, you know, it's just who she is, no matter how stressed out she is. Um, but it's, it's not always smiley. But what really keeps you going is that emotional connection you have um, to the business, to perhaps your customers, to your beneficiaries, to your graduates as well, in my case. Some people think that um, emotion is dangerous for uh, entrepreneurs. I believe emotions, healthy emotions, is really vital to keep the company going. So it's a balance, actually. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you. I hope you get inspired after this, Aina. From that. Yes, yes. <laughs> your, uh, the shoes of your customers, and that will be your inspiration. Mm-hmm. Um, next, uh, do we have any other questions from you guys? Uh, I have a question. Ah, yes, please. Uh, I wanted to ask, how do you get your name out there as a startup since you started at Zero Capital? Yeah, a very good one. Uh, it was Pritesh, wasn't it? Pritesh. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. I saw the name correctly. So when I first started um, getting my name out there, so I was a 23-year-old, right? So this is in the spirit of being transparent. I obviously wanted to get my name out there. I mean, you know, we're doing something good. We want people to know who we are, why we do it. But I realized that um, if I were to focus too much on getting my name out there in the first stage, I'm not saying in the second, third stage of the company, right? Because that's required. In the first stage of the company, um, I will put my product uh, development uh, in, in danger, in other words, because you're chasing for fame or rather for, for branding, for marketing too early on without actually having an actual product yet. So I'm not too sure if you guys have, have, have read this book. It's called uh, Startup CEO. I forgot who the author is. Now, in that book, it says that there are two elements when it comes to starting a business, social enterprise, or startup. Product development and also actually in market, right? So you being in the market. Now, if you spend too much time on product development, without going to the market, then no one will see your product. Or when you go and market your product, it's going to be too late. But if you were to enter the market and spend so much time in that without actually spending time on the product development, then you're endangering your organization um, by actually exposing people to your idea and the product that is not ev- that, that's not even baked fully yet uh, or, or rather ready for people to use, right? So that balance needs to be striked. So what I did uh, from June 2019 until December 2020, it was really just to run my workshop. I didn't, I didn't really bother on how many people know about this. I didn't bother of how many um, media outlets write about us, none by the way, in the first six months. I was just focused on actually getting the youthers on board to attend 
the programs, the workshops we have, so we can actually continue to validate that. So what I've done there, uh, what I did in the first six months of Accelerate, I actually contacted um, you know, universities, I contacted some corporations that are very happy to partner up in terms of running that workshop to get the, the expertise, also to get the youthers to enroll onto the programs as well. I do light marketing. I do it on my Instagram. Accelerate had Instagram already by then, but we only had like, what, what, 200 followers? Or no, 100, maybe less. So I still market it on that. But I really just focused on running small, small workshops. But that small, small workshops helped to get our name out there. Because these youthers come, they come, they like, they put it on Instagram and then more youthers will come, in other words. And slowly, that's how other entities and other organizations and other youthers got to know us as well. So if you see here, just go back to uh, this bit. Yeah, this bit. So this happened early 2020, right? So 2019, six months we were validating 2020, that was when we, 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 were, we were caught by the Polytechnic and College Community Malaysia. How they knew about us was because of our program, our small program uh, with Yayasan Chowkit at the time. And then the founder likes it. The founder started to talk to other people. Hey, check, check out Accelerate. And then Polytechnic started to check us out. And then after that, American Chambers of Commerce got to know about us. So I, I really put in an effort to just make sure that our products or our, our programs, when people come, it really has an impact on them. Um, and from there, it's sort of, you know, the, the, the people, they do the marketing for you, um, which is why it's important that when you do launch your product, when you do put your product out there, it doesn't have to be perfect because there's no such thing as perfect, but it is something that is beneficial, something that works, something that they like, something that is, you know, meaningful and brings value to them because they are your marketing tool. They are actually your organic ambassador. That was how Accelerate's name went out, honestly. I hope that answers the question as well. Yeah, it answers my question. It's very insightful. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I hope you can understand uh, the first part is only do validation for your product. That's it. Get feedbacks. That's it. And get feedbacks. Until one day, some um, maybe like rich guys say, oh, I like them. Okay, so um, let's try to hire them. So a uh, word of mouth, I think it is the best weapon for all entrepreneurs because when people are talking good about your product, uh, I think then uh, everyone will try to uh, learn and know more about your brands. Okay, so um, maybe the last question from you guys before we wrap up this session. I have one more. Yes. Again, do, do you usually open like an exhibition to market your branding? Good question. We have started. Uh, so I think it's a great extension from Pritesh's question, right? So the first year and the second year, we didn't do any sort of expo or marketing or whatever. We only started doing it uh, this year because we are launching Ace Education. Um, the, the e-learning platform that I was talking to you guys about earlier. And because we're, we, you know, we're, we're, we're entering into the tech space, we want to empower more youthers. So that's when we decided, okay, it's time for us to go out there and do marketing events. We do run expos. Um, so we've, what we've done this year is actually, well, we call it our community outreach activities and our programs, where we actually run small bazaars featuring our graduates actually so our graduates have started their own businesses they have products of their own so we actually either run summits or all these bazaars where we invite people to come and actually buy our graduates products as well this um, we believe is a great it's not just a marketing tool you know it's actually also an exposure avenue for our graduates to go out there um, we believe at accelerate the only way to market Accelerate is really through the results of our programs. And our graduates are 
our results, right? They, they are, they, they're, they, they, they're accelerators. They are part of accelerate. Without them, there is no us. Basically, that's what we believe in. And so, when they market the product, it becomes such a great marketing and branding tool for us because people get to see the result. So, in any case, it can be a uh, you. You can sell a product or you can sell a service. The most important thing is people must see that result. Right, because we're all results driven at the end of the day. When we buy products, at least for me, you know, I'll see which one is good based on the review or whatever. Um, and as long as I get to see that, it's great and I'll buy it. And when when people see our graduates, it's it's such a great story to tell without us having to say much, basically. So find that for your business, right? Okay, I think that will be the last question for this. Okay, night. thank you. Thank you so much, Raja, for um, the insightful uh, sharing of your experience. And I do hope everyone can understand that entrepreneurship is not just like on paper, where you just uh, do your BMC and you think everything will just go magically, poop. my business is there. No. Okay, so it takes, like Rauda said, three years and only then she do uh, her own marketing because of she launched a product and whatnot. So um, try to learn. Because uh, entrepreneurship is all about testing your passion and your fire inside you. So um, yeah, um, I I know Swahila has asked about your Instagram, brother. Maybe you can share. Of course. Oh, you guys made me feel like an influencer, <laughs> which I'm not, by the way. <laughs> and just blast off everything, brother. Maybe your website also. Maybe. And can can do. Let me slowly type that for sure. Can do. Okay, guys. Um, before we ended the session with Rauda, I need everyone to open up your camera. Let's take a cute image with her. <laughs> Let's do, guys. Uh, open up your camera and then uh, put a big smile. We don't have so many participants in here, so I hope all of you okay. can open. It's not seems so kosong here. Can send me the picture, Nanti. Yes, of course. <laughs> Omar, Jerilyn, Ahmad Sanat, Shelly, Ritesh, Vivian, Adam Afizi. They're shy. Do they always switch on their camera? Malaysian students are always shy. <laughs> Can no, actually, I realize. I should know it's everywhere, believe me. Okay. Anyone else? All right, cool. Asana is here. Omar Khalaf, are you here? Vivian and Shelly and Adam Afizi. Are you going to go I think they are still getting ready. Wow. They're putting makeup on. No, no, no. Fixing their hair. You have to do this right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think uh, that's all good. Young can join. So, guys, uh, smile. Raise your camera and smile, baby. One, two, three. Okay, another one. Raise smile. One, two, three. Let's see. Okay, thank you so much, guys, for your participation. So, um, right now we are going to hear from them. Uh, there are two minute pitches. If you do have time, uh, you can just stay. But if you need to do something else, uh, I think you can um take your yeah, maybe, uh, do that job, right? So um, right now uh, let us start. Um, uh, thank you so much again, Ramda. Let us start with the pitching session. Let's call upon um, Pritesh. You ready for your pitching? Uh, for my group, uh, Najmi actually will be pitching for us. Mm, yes. Najmi. Najmi. Oh, okay, Najmi. Okay, one second. Uh, okay, can you see my screen? Are you ready? Okay. 
oke. Okay. One second. Oke, okay, so hello everyone. My name is Najmi and today I'm going to present about our business venture which is a band necessities. So band necessities is a um it's an art centric business that manufactures collectibles uh such as mechanical keyboard keycaps and also mini figures. Okay, so moving on to the proper statement. Uh so recently in the past few years the keyboard community in Malaysia has been expanding in a a very high rate and um What we realize is that in Malaysia there isn't a lot of local manufacturers that ma that manufactures these uh collectibles, and thus most uh Malaysians actually go international to find their products, and well this is a problem because internationally the price is actually very high due to our currency exchange and also uh they have to pay international shipping, and well that's where band necessities come in. We provide unique customized keycaps and other uh collectibles. For an affordable price by locally sourcing the materials to make the keycaps, at, at, so that everyone can actually buy them. So for our market, we are targeting two demographics, which is the keyboard enthusiasts and also the merchandise collectors. Okay, so uh, these two demographic usually would converge at a uh, local geek expo such as Comic Fest and Animagaki. And to take a look at how big our market size is, we can actually take a look at the average attendance for these geek expos. For example, in Comic Fiesta, uh, there is an average of 65,000 participants every year. Okay, so for the value proposition, uh, as you can see here, we ban necessities actually uh, Compared to our competitors, we provide a cheaper alternative as well as high customizability as we take in custom orders from uh, Instagram. Okay, as for our revenue, we have two uh, revenue models. The first one is on-demand revenue, where we uh, accept custom uh, orders from Instagram and also marketplace, where we market our products online through Shopee. And the goals for our business is that firstly, we already did the product validation. We created the minimum viable product, the MVP. And also we got like a few users through word of mouth, uh, which is our existing customers. And then after that, in the future, what we plan to do is that we want to um, expand our marketing through social media ads and set up booths at local geek expos. With our final goal in the future is to break into the international market. Okay, that is all from me. Thank you. May I know the market price for your customized keyboard? Okay, so our market price is between 20 and 30 compared to our competitors which can go from like 60 all the way up until 200. 30 per caps or for full set? Per cap, because it's like the custom key cap that uh, per cap. let me show a picture. Ah yeah, per cap. Okay, Um, my next question will be um on your market. Can you go back to your market? May I know why you only focus on um based on your evidence, which is Comic Fiesta and Anima Naki? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? May I know why you focus on this market, which is um you, you focus more on Comic Fiesta and Anima Naki? Oh, uh, this is because in these, uh, for example, the expos, these people are the one that are very interested in customizing their equipment and also collecting um artworks for their favorite for example game or like a uh, series so i think our market will be here and this is where we're going to have the highest uh chance of success our so marketing of this, this is based on events right so what about your daily sales for daily sales so far we just started and uh we have gotten uh we have mostly market through instagram right now and so far we have gotten around 200 ringgit in revenue after oh. starting last month. All right. Um, how about TikTok? Have you done any ads on TikTok? Uh, we have started to make more TikTok content, but we're going to be pushing it more soon. Okay, guys, can you just, um, if you do have like TikTok account, put it in the chat box so we can follow each other? Uh, we do have the QR code here also for scanning. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Bearness is this. Um, love your growth obviously growth because you start with nothing right and then right now you do have like 200 in your account mm. so um 
just my advice will be that um, try to take a bird eye view where you try to explore more um, where your market is. So maybe they do have like um, different channels. Maybe by using Instagram, you can generate like 200. But what if you use uh, more on TikTok or Twitter? Because I believe gigs are all on, on that platform, right? TikTok and also Twitter. But Instagram is quite less. So um, maybe try to more focus on how to generate more on that daily basis. Because I believe during um, gig events, you, everyone is there, the market is big. So you do have a uh, large potential there. Okay, thank you so much for your assistance, Najmi. Very good thank presentation. You. Next, can we have um, from Hydrozun, Zuri? Hi, okay. Hi. Yeah. Uh, let me share my screen. Yep. Let me start whenever you're ready, yeah? Can you see the slide, everyone? Yep. All right. Um, my name is Zuriel. Uh, we are uh, we are coming from this uh, sub, which is the name is the uh, hydrozone. So this is a problem uh, statement that we find. Uh, energy consumption keep rising day by day, especially in urban concrete forest city. So each high rise building actually is a consuming monster that causes countless expenses from government or the building owners to just pay to turn on money just to uh, pay for the energy to let the building to operate. So furthermore, in these urban cities, there is scarcely no opportunity to adapt into renewable energy like solar panels, wind or hydropower as the land has been developed with numerous highest building and also the highest building itself is, has a limited space to install any uh, solar panels. So finding a new way of sustainable energy source for this kind of uh, urban city is imminent for long-term solutions to reduce their energy consumptions and expenses. So what we provide is to turning rain into energy. So hydrogen is harnessing energy from rainwater discharge in the high-rise building town pipes and turning untapped water into renewable energy and turning waste into resources. So our solution is that we provide renewable energy devices uh, in terms of uh, hydro, micro hydro technology that we can harness uh, energy from a rainwater discharge in the high rise building, down pipes. As you can see in this uh, illustration uh, of a high rise building, when the rain started, uh, the down pipes will collect all the raining waters from the rooftop and jet, uh, discharge down to the, uh, to the low, lower lands. So we can uh, install this kind of our innovations of uh, renewable energy devices to harness the energy from these uh, rainwater down pipes. And then we can store the energy and and supply back to the buildings to reduce their energy consumption and to become a very sustainable uh, energy uh, usage in this building. So we would like to say that uh, hydrogen for this kind of uh, micro hydro energy is uh, we are the only one to provide this kind of uh, renewable energy solutions. But there are other similar companies that also provide uh, micro hydro power, but they are mostly in sea level or river. And what we are providing is a cheap, affordable price and easy to install compared to others with high expensive and difficult to install. And our customer segments is that our target markets are energy consumer like commercial buildings owner, residential building management or property developers at, for the building edge below 20 years. Uh, specifically, we target uh, cyber area area. So the uh, uh, potential clients will be the buildings like hostel, uh, university, hospital, or residential buildings like apartment, condominium, or even can have uh, commercial buildings and like shopping complex or office tower. And also we are also in our early stage, we are targeting on a uh, uh, university building like faculty or hostel buildings. So let's say the customer persona that we have is like a, a faculty of engineering in MMU is the building age is under 80 years. And there is a very high demand on electricity uh, usage. And the working profile is that uh, use, the building is used as an office or laboratory and require 24 seven hours of electricity to operate their computer labs and also other equipments. So this kind of uh, customer is tech oriented and willing to adopt new technology and sustainable conscience. 
So the market that we targeted, uh, we can scroll down to Cyberjaya, which has less more than 500 units buildings. And for looking at Cyberjaya alone, it's about 500 units of high-rise building available. So taking about 10% of it, the market size is about 50 units buildings available just to, for our early uh, target market. And the renewable revenue model is that hydrogen is an EPCC company that provides renewable energy solution in form of micro hydro project developments via B2B and B2G model. So the business revenue comes from price calculated for a whole project, just by lump sum or by stages according to the project timeline or scale. And the business activity can be corroborated with various agencies and private sectors, such as Mosti, Surahanjaya Tanagar, EDC and Jakarta Alam Sakita or Green Tech uh, Malaysia. And the redeeming will can provide as a transaction through uh, transactional sales by the whole project developments, product fabrications and construction and commissioning. And also we can provide listening options to provide to those uh, leasing uh, to those any uh, buildings that uh, have some financials uh, or their rental models. And we also come to the revenue also come from maintenance like cleaning services or provide uh, optimization checking. So the goal is to uh, validate uh, approach to 10 high-rise building owners around cyber general area like school, hospital, or hotel. And we, we produce also have a, our prototype and propose the, our project to the clients. And also for deliver 10, Guys, is C stuck or I am? No. No, guys, you guys here? Hello? Zuri, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, okay. we, yeah. yeah. All right. Um. So thank you for your presentation. I think um it is quite uh impressive rather than the first uh, meet up with you. So um there's only a few things that I think you need to um tweak a bit. Um before we go to that, we do have like um several weeks up before uh, to do this thing. I want I would like to understand more on your validation. What does people say about your product? Okay. Uh, they would like to mostly they would like to see about the outputs, uh, the, the the power outputs, what how much can get from these devices and and the return of uh, investment uh, for the whole project. So I think um maybe for people, I believe that you have to do validation with uh, household people, right? Which means uh, individuals or families. So um for them, I think they cannot understand more. Hello. Am I working right now? Sorry, um, is everyone here? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I disconnected. Yeah, just coming back. All right. Um. So, uh, Zuril. Um. I believe that um. Everyone that gives you feedback is actually people from uh, families or individuals, right? So you never go to like um developers or owner of buildings yet. Uh, there's some expert like, but it's uh properties one, but uh we had not really uh like in touch with uh, proper discussions because they uh, are really hard to meet those kind of uh the developers the, the kind of uh, owner like building owners like. so we, we would like to uh, right now the product is ready yet or not uh prototype prototype, prototype design so um just would like to ask uh, more on the technical side so if let's say um the whole uh, day um let's say from 9 9 a.m and up till 5 p.m it is raining so how much power can I contain? Oh, does it uh, this kind of, uh, for actually for once, we are having like uh, two, two gig, we can actually for this kind of like, if we have budget, we can develop very uh, advanced type of uh, generators. So we, if, let's say we're thinking about that kind of 
uh, equipments uh, for just uh, we can working for one one hour we can have a two kilowatts hour so actually for for 10 hour we can have a 20 kilowatts hours just for a concept that just normal household usually for in Malaysia the uh, energy consumption is about, about 11 kilowatts hour per day okay so, yeah. so um, when I'm looking at your slides if I'm a researcher I can understand but if I'm a layman it's quite hard for me to understand so I really hope what you can imply to your slide or you can tweak a bit is that um, try to search on uh, more layman words so people can directly understand. Let's say if the investor is actually a property developer, but um, at that time he didn't have all the technicalities that you have um, presented. So it will be quite hard for him to understand. All right. So it is better for you, like the, problems, uh, the problem statement, right? If you can just cramp up into a more um, like more one sentence or small 80 words of what you are uh, trying to solve, I think it's quite beneficial rather than you just uh, blame on those facts. It is good to have those facts, but uh, it is not good for us to um, only read because we want to hear you. Okay. The second okay. part is that um, my, my, my worries is that uh, do you know who is your customer? Because uh, when you're explaining to us, because um, based on the um, capability of you guys as a student to build a prototype and whatnot, um, if you do want to approach these um, developers and else, you do need, like you said before, a bigger generator, a, a quality, a much more quality uh, equipment and whatnot. So the price will be much more higher for you to sustain. Um, for me, my suggestion would be that um, try to focus more on those people who um, have money, but at the same time, they are interested in this kind of solution. Okay. So if you can produce a much more friendly user product, it will be easier for you to sell. Lah. Because um, like Rauda have said before, the first step, right? The first step. So she just did um, simple with uh, those people in Kuala Lumpur, and then only after that, it goes like that. So I hope Zuril, you can um, go back with your team, try to discuss again, um, get those remain words into your sites, okay. and then um, try to um, test out your, your market. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Zuril. Okay, next, can we have uh, from around Ahmed Senat? Um. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, just give me a second. Oh, yep. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Ahmed Tanant, and today we'll be talking about Around App. First, let's understand the main problem. Everyday life is becoming easier by using different apps, but only one huge field has failed to be simple finding the right person to get your service done. Finding the right person without going through the hassle of searching all around the internet, looking for reviews, or actually trying to find the best price, picking the date for them to come. It took me too long to say this sentence, as it took every one of us to reach out to professional service providers. It's time for a change. The market is in need of an app that provides a variety of services without the hassle of asking around. It's a simple app, and you connect with many professionals around you. In order to understand more, let's see how Around works. From a business owner's side, if I want to open a plumbing shop, the only options I have for customers to approach me is by creating a website or an app. But these solutions are very expensive. On the other hand, if I create a Facebook page, I will not be able to reflect my business identity and list all the things I want. Around fixes all of those issues by allowing business owners to create their own profiles. So the plumber can reflect his business identity by choosing the beam color, creating multiple pages to fit his need, and listing his products as shown in the picture. And for the first time ever, Around allows the business owner to list services related to his category. So instead of the plumbing shop selling plumbing tools only, you can get more profit from plumbing related services by fixing your tap. From a customer side, if a customer looking for someone to fix his tap, 
I will no longer need to search online or call businesses or individuals. To get around, I can click on the Fix Tab service, take a photo, and explain my problem. Now, nearby business owners will be on our fight, and instantly I will be paired with multiple offers to choose from. Here, I can accept the offer I like the most, and my request is confirmed. Very easy. Compared to our competitors on the market, Around is the only app that provides everyday services and products customer needs with the budget they have. It provides unique tools for business owners to connect with their customers, no hassle. For starters, we'll be focusing on skilled individuals and small businesses looking to broadcast their services to the local market. Given the limited budget the small businesses have, Around is a great tool to reflect the business identity connect potential long-term customers to them conveniently. Around makes money by using three revenue streams, which are subscription, commission, and advertisement. And those revenue streams are reflected in three plans we offer for business owners to choose from. Each plan contains a unique feature for business owners to benefit from. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much, um, Ahmed Sanet. So I do understand your product right now, um, but um, it is good. It is better, far better from um, the, the, the starting that you have presented to me. Um, just, um, I love the way you, you, you tell us the problem statement. Uh, it is very clear. Um, there's only one thing. This is an advice for all of you. Um, I believe that an app like around is um, going to be a super app, which means that um, it's going to be like Grab, which it offers many services in one app. But to do that, again, I would like uh, to um, advise all of you um, why we suggest our students to actually start and um, start with one um, segment first, because of we would like you guys to understand the structure first. Which means that um, after you're getting the, the structure, let's say like around you, you, uh, you support for the plumber services and also baking services, um, the things that you need to understand is that um, I would like you to have a moment or a period where you can fail and you can fail fast. Which means that um, let's say if you uh, try to test out with these two markets, which is uh, bakery and also plumbing, and then uh, for let's uh, say like in three months, and then you see uh, which structure or which segments are much more better, you try to focus on that one because of that structure is currently working and you do not have to waste your money on um, other services that is not wanted by people. So that same goes to all of you, which means that um, if like um, people, um, bare necessities before, uh, they want to do like, lots of things which is first uh, customized caps and then uh, they want to do like, um, merchandise and um, what other services. It is good for you to have the goals, but um, the first step is to understand the structure and then you get the feedbacks from your users uh, and then do validations because um, when you do validations with your, um, your current customers or current users, what you can do is that you can ask them what is the other services that you want? What are the other products that you want? So that you can add on freely because they have answered for you freely, which means they are target, they are market in that side that are not touched by other companies. So I hope Ahmed Sanat, you can um, get the message right now and um, everything is cool enough. Uh, I love the way you, you portray the apps uh, and I believe it can be a super apps, but for now, Try to do um, your 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 until you get the first one, the first one. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Around. So, uh, can we have from Smart Spam? Ahmad Johan? Smart Spam, can you hear? Yep. Uh, is it full screen? Yeah, full screen. Can you share full screen? Right. Okay.
Uh, evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ahmad Johan, and uh, I'm. Uh, sorry, sorry. Can you uh click the present button because it is still uh small. Oh. Uh, Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Johan, and our product is uh, Smart Spec. We are, we are, I'm from SS Team, and we already we make our product as uh, Smart Spend. Okay. Uh, smart Spend is a is a startup to help consumer to make smart spending decision and bridge customer relation uh, between customer and uh, grocery providers. So our goal is uh, to be, be a, a information provider for regular customer to shop every day. Is also the problem statement for this uh, shopper often buy product that are low quality, and then they experience uh, misleading misleading advertisement of product. And the third one, they the product uh, provider do not meet customer expectation. So our proposed solution is. Uh, we provide a second opinion by our AI to cater to the personal reference. So another solution is to prevent to present a verifiable and summarized information based on several parameters, and the third one to assess the worthiness and the value of the product. Okay, so here, so so what is our what we do? We do is uh, we provide a credible information to customer on the product they want to spend. And we we were we are here to entrust to cast to uh, shoppers to, to a pool of qualified product. And uh, we uh, we can uh, be a, a bridge a provider to for the quality insurance certification. So our potential market is uh, regular shoppers individual family with a budget constraint. Uh, so it, 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 it's a design for an app for everyone. Uh, uh, the big data, big data and uh, pro product insight to everyone. So based on, on our market study, we uh, have asked 67 respondents before. 86% uh, have uh, ex experienced uh, buying useless item. Then uh, when we ask again, 67 respondent, if, if there's an app, if there's an app that can suggest you what the item you might need, and uh, yeah, 83%, more than 83% of them say yes, uh, they will, they will use an app like that. Okay, so here is our competitor outlook. So basically we found out that we have a fig, uh, a fig jolly guard and VVD. What they do is a fig is uh, a product is uh, uh, focused on the health product and the video is focused on a wine product. They, they scan uh, they scan and they disclose product detail and product review. Uh, what they don't have uh, compared to us is they do not have su suggestion and their, and their product is uh, sparse in, in their recommendation is sparse in varieties. So our, we use our Use artificial intelligence to give consumer consumer suggestion, uh, to so we can we can uh make our AI we know your mind more than you know yourself. Yes. Okay. So, uh, we we this is how our product works. Okay, from user, if you open your phone, you can uh, for our open your open our apps. You can look uh search for item brand. And then uh, can then you can have a product suggestion. So we then we can connect to uh, 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 available vendors nearby. So from geolocation and supply chain information. So then you can uh, either can shop from online or you can go to the physical store itself. So this is our survey. So this is video of survey we have done. Okay. 
So this is our call to action. Uh, we have already created a landing page for our product and this is, uh, uh, this is the, the beginning of our product. So that's it. So thank you. Uh, so our, our slogan is uh, spend it, use it and don't waste it. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much, Amal Tuhan. So my first question, what nak jadi apa sebenarnya? Will you guys be like um, Shopee? Or will you guys be like uh, Grab Market? For us is uh, right. For us is uh, we are. I think our the novelty is we are not going to be either of them. Uh, we're not going to be uh, e-commerce or an an app. We are the uh, information providers that uh, makes people life easier. So let's say that's the value that you're providing. Uh, so how are you going to charge your customer based on that? So basically, uh, we collect data, uh, user generate data, then uh, user generate data that is, that is not their personal, but it's for the uh, things around them that are surrounding or the compared to the marketplace, uh, and then we just uh, sell it to uh, third party that is uh, like researcher. Uh, Entrepreneur that is uh, looking to uh, do uh, something good. Of it. So, um, your core is actually AI, right? You're developing the system. Is it true? Yes. So, and why don't you out. provide services to this e commerce platform rather than you're doing it yourself? Yeah, you know? But then, uh, can you repeat again? Why don't you provide AI service for these e-commerce platforms, for these uh, shopping platforms, online platforms, rather than you, you created another one? May I understand why? So our goal is uh, to help a regular consumer uh, that is uh, shop every day. That is not, we not only cater online shoppers, we cater also offline shoppers that uh, go to shop and shop every day. Uh, usually they don't, usually they are, this uh, customer uh, have a lot of uh, the, so the percentage is still large of people shop uh, offline uh, and offline also, but then uh, we they usually, we, we cannot get, we don't have that uh, uh, data. Okay, so, um, our company is doing um, databases, uh, analysis and whatnot, like what you, have, you are trying to do. Um, and we do know like our partners who are doing the same things. So the business and the money is there for if you can uh, provide that system, which means that people are going to buy that system. Right now, um, what I understand is that you're trying to be B, but you're explaining A to me. Do you understand me? Amat Johan? Amat Johan? Uh, Alright. Boleh faham tak kena nak cakap Melayu? Okay. Uh, so, so, yeah. Hey, actually, uh, right. So, fahaman saya yang kepakaran Johan adalah uh, membuat software. Betul tak? You akan boleh. I have a team uh, for that. Uh, not say that I'm uh, expert on that. I have, but I have a team of experts. Okay. On that so AI and that, data science. That's, that's the thing. Um, if you do have that specific punya kepakaran, why you want to create another yang bukan kepakaran? Which means if you are creating this, you are trying to compete with those um companies that yang saya dah cakap. Which is uh, why you want to compete with Razada, with Shopee, because they are doing the same thing. But the lacking behind them um, is only that the AI. Okay, imagine if Lazada, Shopee can do as the same like if we are surfing TikTok. Okay, TikTok AI is like jelly. If you are watching 8 a.m. until 10 a.m., you watch this. So they deliver that kind of content. 10 a.m. until 12 p.m., that kind of content. So that kind of AI is not there in our um, existing e-commerce platform. Let's say if I'm buying diapers for my child in Lazada, 
and after a few days they are bl they are blasting me like ads of diapers i don't want that because um i'm i want to buy another necessary things that i need to buy so that kind of ai is not there you got me right now so that is why um according to can you go back to your uh, competitive analysis This is where you state yourself. We use AI to give customer credition. Okay. You state to me here, but in your problem uh, statement until your and the end of the slides, what I can understand is you're trying to be B, but you're explaining A. You get me. Okay, uh, so I think it's about our America. They just uh they just uh cater to a single single market uh just like fit and jolly gut is a, a health product uh is a health product review mm -hmm. so, but us uh we cater to everyday stuff that uh like say you want to buy a milo the milo is uh any just any place i got milo there's a different price different price of the each of shop so we help them but let's talk about practicality, can we? Okay, okay you do say um, that you have um, a team of expertise in developing AI and the system itself. Um, do you think you have the expertise to do marketing, to acquire vendors, um, and then to acquire new customers, to do customer services, uh, to do customer feedbacks, backups, and everything else? Do you think you do have that? Um, expertise yes yeah, uh, i'm part of it can you do that all alone what shopee and lazada have done for years not alone but I, i'll build, build, build a, a team uh, yeah. around, around it so that, that is our our expenditure for to build the team Okay, can you go back to your problem statement? Okay, can you read again to me about this? No, 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 uh, the, the first one, the first part. So, so first, uh, often buy products that are low quality. No, no, uh, the first part, the first slide. Uh, oh, okay, here. Yeah. Uh, can you read me again? Startup is set up to help uh, spot spending decision and reach customer relation with uh, reach customer relation with grocery provider. Mm. So grocery providers um it does not relate to yeah because I I feel like you you if you're not agreeing with me that you're trying to explain B but you're doing A then I would say my assumption will be that based on your um slides is that. Uh, you're trying to cater everything. That's the problem. Okay, because here you want to only bridge customer relations and make sp smart spending decision for the customers, and um, you want to build bridge between customers and also grocery providers, right? Okay, can you go next? Here you say that uh, shoppers buy low quality and then false misleading advertisement and product providers do not meet customer expectations. So it is also a different um, problem statements. So that's why I'm, I'm saying that um, if you want to start, um, I, I, I don't say that you cannot uh, do smart spend, but you need money to do that. Okay, You need large amount of money for you to produce something like Grab, something like Shopee, something like Lazada. And um, something that you have said before, if you don't want to be like e-commerce, uh, that's your opinion. But um, that that will be it. If people go in and buy things, or people go in and see things like carousel and whatnot, and you bridge them, it's an e-commerce platform. So um, it does not run from that. So my my suggestion would be that if you want to uh, stick with smart spend, um, do um, indulge us with more. Um, to the side of groceries and also customers, not towards the um, AI systems too much, okay? Because uh, I get 
miscarry on that. Okay, so um, and the second part is that try to chunk out uh, and niche on your one problem statement that you want to solve. If at the intro introduction you're saying you want to build a bridge between customers and um, your grocery providers, do that only for the first step. If not, people will get confused like me. Okay, so uh, I I'm expecting that you you have the expertise of doing AI system, but right now you are trying to do that. Okay, so that's my explanation. But for others, um, that will be my suggestion to you. Try to um, niche out the problem statement and be more focused, the solution, market goals and everything towards your customers and towards your uh, grocery providers only. That's the first step. Okay, if you want to um, proceed with smart spend. If not, try to go back with your team and ask them again because um, data mining, um, data provide, is actually quite good business right now. So if you want to start small and um, step by step, do this. But if you want to start small and uh, go fast, do what I have said before. Okay, thank you so much, Ahmad Johan. Uh, next, thank you. can we hear from Comic Reka? Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sekejap eh. Saya share screen. Sekejap eh. Boleh nampak? Not yet. It's still Ahmad Johan screen. Oh, maybe they gonna unshare. Could. <laughs> ah, uh, Ahmad Johan, please stop sharing. Okay, jap. I change. Alright. Nampak. 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 Boleh present. Okay. Hey, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Ah, uh, my name is Haina Sohila, and I'm from Comic Reka. So, just a little bit about me. Uh, I learned 3D animation and my purpose is to create a comic based on the story about Orang Asli. So the problem statement is uh, currently in our society, people don't really know about Orang Asli community and I would also love to, I, I want to give awareness about Orang Asli so that people will come and to help them and also support their business or entrepreneurship and etc. So the, the way that I want to give awareness is by using the comic, comic media. So it is to introduce the Orang Asli culture and value their culture and create a sustainable impact and also to document their dying culture. So this is a little bit about Orang, As Orang Asli. They are 18 tribes and they are the sec second oldest living DNA. And they have a really unique and sustainable culture, which I would like to put as a story in the comic. So this is just one of their beautiful fashions, really unique and styles. And it's like kind of this concept that I will be putting into the comic. And there's just sets of arts and crafts that have a really meaningful, meaningful story behind it. It tells about how they choose their life partners, which I will pre put this put it into the story. And the market set segment is uh, for now. I would like to focus on the kids who loves adventure stories and who's also. Uh, interested in knowing about the nature and jungles, love adventures, and really love comics. And why? Why do they? Why people should choose comic records? Because it's it tells about culture, and it's a fun orang asli. Uh, it's a fun story about orang asli and have a. Uh, uh, it's, it's a comic about indigenous orang asli, which right now is quite rare. And 
the reason why I want to start this is because to re-educate and exchange knowledge from the reader and also etc. And the comic is actually supporting the UNESCO 17 SDGs because um, I want to implement how to take care of the nature and about the crisis of the world. Not, not just not just like it, it's not that too boring of educational comic, but it's it it in a form of Disney like story, you know, it's just about that that person and they're telling they're having this struggle living in the jungle and maintaining the ecosystem so therefore people need to help and save the planet so this is just the one of the tangible and intangible impacts and the unique to our value proposition is because we provide a comic that is much more appealing to uh, about orang asli culture comics and the comics accessibility is also easy it's easy to come and read our comics because i want to publish it in webtoon which is just a free platform for everyone and yeah and this is just a business model canvas and this this is just a summary of the the financial that I need and etc and the re revenues is I want we will be getting revenues by selling the comic um hard copy and soft copy um by by publishing in webtoons if if I get a an amount of followers like 1000 readers or something like that and I will get paid by the webtoons for creating such um, fun stories and then if I were to continue make a not more series in the future then they will still still keep on paying and also from ad revenues in the website and also I want to sell merchandise and also possibly ebook from another another pl platform so currently the progress is um, i'm doing the research and development progress whereby i visit from village to village to know what their problem is and to know what kind of story that i can create by by observing their lifestyle and culture so this is in endaurupin the recent recent visit that i went is on orang hari orang asli day which there, there's a story behind that that like a tall tower is actually their daily hari raya mandi hari raya that they do every hari orang asli day and i would really love to put it in the comic as well and this is just one of the achievement and awards that we have gotten in 2020 and 2021 and and recently just a few days ago we got we, we received an award from the ICANN 2022 it's three awards in Canada this is just our recent achievement so uh, that is all for me thank you Okay, nah. Um, yeah, I understand a bit about this uh, brand, ah. Mm -hmm. Younger school gomba is yours or someone else? It's um, it's my partner. Yes, because without them, I wouldn't be okay, able no. uh, to get I, the story. Sorry, I forgot. Um, I just want to understand what's the catch from them. What's okay. the catch? The catch from them is th they are the one because. Uh, the catch from them is the catch I, for them, not, for, oh, not from them, for them. What, for them. Uh, what do they get if they allow you to use their, yeah, JSG is actually the one who uh, gained the awards and whatnot, right? So what's mm -hmm. the to, uh, orang cakap menunggang brand ni lah. So what's the catch for them? I 
provide comic and stories from their packages and programs so they can they can use the comic that i'm making as part of uh what do you call it merchandise for them to tell and give awareness to their customers or other others using the story that i'm creating do, do you um, know do you understand how, how much how much does it um contohlah satu comic tu jual how much will you get how much will they get um uh Have you discussed or not that thing? I I haven't detailed discussed it yet um, because I'm still sorting out the the research on the publishing online and also offline, the price for publishing books and also ebooks because I'm also I'm still doing the research with them. Okay, now, um, I understand that this actually um an initiative from a professor in Gombak. So why does it say it is your friends? Yeah, yeah I know. What? JSG is actually a program by IIUM Gombak, right? Oh no no, Jungle School Gombak Malaysia is a social enterprise separate from the IIUM. Separate. Separate. Yeah. It's not. It's not in IIUM. It's not in the university activities. It's just another, another social enterprise. And Jungle School Studio is another social enterprise, and we're collaborating. Okay. So yeah. your friend is the founder. Yes, I I'm the founder for Jungle School Gombak Studio. You you're the founder. Yes. So right now you're the first year in MMU. Yes, first year. Ah, uh, how old are you? May may I ask? I'm twenty two. So, dari umur berapa kau sendiri? Jungle School Gombak. Um, I I involved with Jungle School Gombak since I was small, since I was eleven. Just doing like river cleaning and following in so, the Jungle School Gombak. You ahli Jungle School Gombak ke atau you own Jungle School? Gombak? I'm I'm creative director for Jungle School Gombak. Yes. That's the thing yang senang uh, cerita. Yeah. <laughs> tak, sebab dia macam suspicious sangat oh, dari first uh, meeting. Because like I said before lah, uh, Suhaila. Mm. It, it is good for you to um, leverage on your friends. Mm-hmm. If you're, you're meeting people like um, kalau kata ada customers yang datang ke Jungle School Bomba and then you want to leverage on that brand, that mode is good. Mm-hmm. But in terms of um, seeking for funds, uh, mm-hmm. you're trying to be like um, another put another image uh-huh. in front of Jungle School Bomba. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's not quite good because um, my understanding will be rumble. You know, you need Jungle mm-hmm. School Bomba. Ke you need uh, you know, kat belakang ni pun you tak tulis you punya product. <laughs> you tulis Jungle School Bomba. So. I don't know lah because Okay, um, okay, I understand. Faham tak benda tu? Sebab Ha ha ha. So uh, macam I'm 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 pre- representing three uh, uh, like uh, the product, the studio and the yeah. other company. Okay, so I I understand your So um you can do that. I understand that your uh, creative director for Jungle School Gombak. Mm-hmm. But um do, do they allow you to do to comic reka? Yes. So if that's the case um Like I've said before, when I will first uh, meet up, create a new image, which means uh, you can you can um, put them as a partner, okay? Mm-hmm. You can put them as a um, we are backup by a sustained um, society, which is Jungle School Bomba. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you can tell about that. But before that, please tell more about you because you know, when you check up, you still didn't draw anything, right? Yeah, I'm doing the concept, the draft for the concept characters and backgrounds. And I I heard just now you said you want to do like uh, Disney-ish for this orang asli, right? No, what what I meant by that is the story is not like those sejarah comic or educational I'm... textbook comic so, that is. Um, my suggestion will be that for comic director, if you want to, macam nampak pung hujungnya. 
Mm-hmm. If possible, try to create a new universe for it, honestly. Mm-hmm. You said before you um ada berapa berapa princess yang you tunjuk tadi kan? Orang mm-hmm. take care uh, honestly. You can mm-hmm. ask them for their punya macam kita kan ada hantu ada para uh-huh. hantu. Yes hantu. yes. So you can do that with them. Mm-hmm. So like they are the orang punya tokoh. Yes, uh, they don't say because uh, they are yes, yes, the legendary they... of their punya sisters, kan? Mm-mm. So that kind of stories you can compile and build like Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, basically. yes, yes. yes. That, that's a that's a nice idea. I was thinking that is the thing that I want to see in your slides, not this. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. because right now you're selling me um, macam you tengah sell the guy uh, Alcom tau. You tengah jual DJ guy. Ah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I'm from okay, okay. I'm from IAM, so I know about this. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah, be clear on that. Uh, try to rebuild again. Um, and see you again lah uh, next time. Okay, sure. Right? Okay, sure, sure. Um, I I have a question. Hmm. Which kulia are you from? Ah, uh, I call. Ah, uh, but wait, I call. Ah, oh, okay. 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 Thank you. Alright. Thank you so much. Um. Okay. So let's go to another group. Shelly Creek Studio. You here? Shelly, calling for Shelly. Shelly, sudah tidur ke? Ah. Okay. So you're doing. Uh, Vivian. Are you going to present, Vivian? Oh, Satish Shuren. <laughs> okay, Satish Shuren. Good. Satish, we cannot hear your voice. Ah, uh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, a little bit of technical issues. Ah, uh, just give me one minute. Yeah. Okay. Just start whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay, able to see me, right? Yep, we can hear yeah. you, we can see you. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir, and also my fellow friends. So, we are from the group Amali. We are eight of us. And our project here today, what I'm speaking about is Otoma Seed Farm. So, I'll move on to the problem statement. So the main issues uh, we are having after the inflation is uh, in the fishing industry. So from that, most fish farmers focus on commercial fish production and the production of fish seeds are large in quantity. And this can be detailed by, uh, this, this uh, might need a detailed process in order to produce a healthy fish seed. So, uh, uh, fish seed are uh, often sold by third parties, which make its uh, which make it inconsistent. So there comes our solution, Otoma Seed Farm, where we come out with a fish farm which consists of ras, uh, which consists of this uh, four of this uh, automation in order to produce a healthy fish uh, seed. So it consists of RAS, automation, solar, and IoT. Those are the things. So now I'll move on to the first uh, system that we are bringing in is RAS. It's called a recycling aquaculture system. So with RAS system, we help fish farmers to get great quality fish seed. So how does this happen is we, we will make a system and in that we will be implementing IoT and also other IoT and other automation in order to check on the oxygen level, on the pH level, ammonium content. And this is to get the best seed production in the industry. So this is our competitor analysis. So first we would have uh, Arc Aquaculture Resource Center, which is in uh, Sungai Buloh, Selangor. So they are doing this for years, but 
what differs them uh, from us is that they are doing it in a manual way where they don't have rust system or they don't have any iot's which going to make the seed healthy as us but they are running it in a manual way where where they produce the feed seed and provide it to the uh, to the consumer so then after we have a uh, bonio eco star, uh, star agriculture where fishery business is not there but they are providing the technology so that's their their backdrop and also we have e fishery which is in bandung and currently is ours automasit which is in slim river uh, kampung rasau slim river where we are coming out with the new technology which is a uh, ras pit iot and other technologies so how we are so next slide would be how we are different from the other others so uh, so th this is a much uh, technical part of it so i would skip this part as it's uh, more into the system and how it flows so next would be the key point where how how are we different from the other competitors so we are producing our own food for the uh, fishes so we are uh, producing moina moina is produced and it, it 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 will be a production where we will feed our fi uh, fish by our own which this would be a major uh, attraction to the investors so next would be the iot that i have explained as its uh, cost reduction is moina and solar panel installation and for the iot part is it's going to take care of the temperature water level and the water oxygen as i explained before so this would be a brief uh, slide on the production cycle so how long it would take for us to produce the entire entire uh, from the hatchery into the seed so there would be 26 days in a cycle where fertilization will take place fish seed early stage and also fish seed is marketable stage okay so this would be our current project where we have uh, where we have planned a pond size of 90 by 40 feet where we have two pond and cage quantity would be 36 cages so uh, this would be the value proposition how how we are bringing it into uh, my a uh, value so in a month fish seeds that would be produced would be 288000 and per fish seed that we going to sell is about 7 cents per fish, uh, fish seed so in current market it's going up to 10 to 12 cents where we going to have a price war as well where we bringing it only for 7 cents so that that that, that is a key point also that you need to take note of uh, here so we have made a, a calculation of the profit which is 20k in a month then a monthly cost which you need to invest is 5k which uh, yeah so the fixed cost would be 35k and first year production cost would be 95k this is fixed monthly and the first year production cost second year uh, full year operations is this amount and first year profit alone can reach up to 120k so that that's the wow here where 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 you put in little and you get this much of amount and and we have uh, done a calculation in this so it will take only 6 months to cover all fixed costs and uh, to as as per what we you can see what you get at the end of the first year so this is the amount so at that sums up our project so this is us so you can contact us at this uh, particular email and yeah and a brief pictures of our potential loca location this is located in uh, kuala rasau slim river pera where as for now in this one month period as we started up to now 
we have uh, done uh, not only the prototype. Prototype is we have a, a prototype and also we have a system, a simple system which consists of four tanks. Am I uh, right, Adam? With the number of tanks that we have. Uh, yeah, so actually we have, uh, basically we have one tank for the fresh water and then we have like three for the, to put inside all the fish for the production. Yeah, small scale for testing the product. Okay, uh, thank you Adam. So then comes, this is our milestone that we have uh, placed in. So the completion and also where there will be a, Mo a Moina production and also there will be a fish cage. This will be the final phase where we will bring in the sensor and also social media marketing. We have put it in the third phase of it. So that sums up our pitch today. Thank you. So we, uh, we are now open for questions. Yeah. Thank you so much, Atish. So for yeah. you guys in your presentation, eh, my face be like yes at the end. Ah, uh, like, what do you want to eh, what do you want to pick up line? Okay, so um, for me, it is a good product. For me, it has large potential for um, market. Uh, and you can go global with this. Um, may I know right now, um, in terms of prototype, where are you? We, we have, can I say? I'll, I'll pass it to you, Adam. Okay, okay. All, right, all right, thank you. Uh, so, basically, right now, uh, we already uh, do the prototype for one month as of now. Uh, sekarang ni, so, dekat oh, Slavery Verb. So, sekarang ni, kita orang dah dekat um, the RAS system tu, kita orang dah buat dah. Yeah, we already done it. And so, really the other, the system. Yeah, yes. yeah. Kita orang dah siap dah. Semua dekat bagian. Uh, can uh, set this? Can you go below? Like yeah, sure. show the picture. Like show the picture that we had the project location. Project okay, location. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So project ni kau orang punya sendiri ke atau kampung ah? Uh, ah, kita orang punya sendiri. So uh, oh, this is actually uh, my. Ah. Parents punya, yeah. This is actually my parents punya uh, mm. tanah. Jadi, yeah, we have a lot of. Uh, and then, uh, last time pun memang dah ada operate juga, but failed due to pandemic because they already started for one month, and then after that pandemic comes, and yeah, mm. everything is like closed down. And then after, like, I try to help my father to cover, but somehow sebab tak boleh, memang tak dapat because of the limitation of uh, working here and there and then ada macam uh, sekatan jalan raya semua tu kan so, uh, so once I graduated and then we uh, change, uh, we started to okay, move dah. back benda, on benda, this benda yang korang buat ni uh -huh. uh, adalah orang panggil macam lane mine lah lane mine gold mine maksudnya hmm. betul cara korang jual korang boleh kaya But hmm. right now, I think um, the first part, sebab apa yang saya cakap, eh? oh, at the first part, uh, I, I kind of, wow, this product is so amazing. Until the end, dah bunyi scam. Why oh, dia bunyi macam scam. Belakang-belakang dah bunyi MLM lah. Dia, oh, yeah, yeah. dia daripada <laughs> macam jual Grab, dia terus macam jual One XOX pada orang. Yeah. So, the feeling is like that. Faham. It's very good yeah. at the start lah, beginning. Aduh. 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 We, we are very used to get okay. that comment. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, it's not, it sounds like oh, uh, macam like too good to be true, right? Tapi no, it's not too good to be true. But you you putting uh, wrong things into um, oh. so okay. Uh, mm. Like this now, um, you said the rest system is it right? Hmm. Yeah, that's it. Why don't you test up with um orang orang yang dah ada sangka? Hmm, boleh cik. Ada juga kita orang plan like this September we are uh, we are going to college perikanan, so we want to approach them like on 12 September macam tu lah. Uh, so kita orang punya schedule. Okay, so uh, right now, uh, if you do have like cages, dah ada dah. Maksudnya kalau kata uh, um, that partner ada cages, 
Mm-hmm. Orang tinggal uh, start your rush ni sendiri lah. Uh-huh. Lagi satu, uh, apa ni? Apa apa kos Kira... utama? Apa kos utama untuk orang jalan ni? Okay, kos utama is the electricity and yang inilah electricity and the uh, feed feeding tu sebab okey tadi kan macam kita ada moina uh, moina production uh-huh. tapi moina production tu dia kita panggil dia kutu air lah eh, in Malaysia uh-huh. kita yeah. biasa panggil kutu air plankton. so kutu air yeah. ya yeah, the plankton tu so ya yeah, the plankton tu kita dia suitable for fish seed je tapi untuk kita buat induk benih induk ikan untuk kita buat telur dia tu uh, we still have to feed to feed them with uh, produce feed dia macam apa pellet fish pellet tu mm-hmm. so that is the cost uh, the first thing tapi okay, cuma yalah ya ah dengan electricity pada sistem ah. sesuai untuk um, fish seed juga atau untuk semua ikan sesuai everything like every seed so, termasuklah sebab ah, tu alam dia kaya dia rasa yeah. okey so okay. right now Uh, I don't know if you guys agree to this or not but uh, try okay. to um, tengoklah view ni so mm. my understanding is that if you can test out only eh, only the part of RAS system dengan mana-mana um, suppliers okay let's mm. say kalau ada 36 cage you test mm. out with them and then uh, let's say uh, run like 3 months you you cakap lah you bagi offer dia half price ke from your RAS mm. system mm. package mm. and then um, let's see the feedback how, macam mana dengan uh, perubahan Orang hmm. tu dah mungkin uh, boleh kurangkan pekerja hmm. Orang tu dah tak payah nak pergi turun di hari-hari sebab ada IoT hmm. semua kan So hmm. that's the value yang aku rasa korang tak nampak lah So rather hmm. than you are waiting for hmm. Yelah nak kumpul modal bit cage And hmm. then baru hmm. hmm. answer hmm. Cari seorang yang hmm. boleh uh, Okay ini aku, ini aku aku tertarik dengan sistem korang Sebab okay. tu aku cakap dengan korang eh cerita sampai how we are different je yang bawah-bawah tu banyak cerita that's scam hmm, hmm, hmm. lah <laughs> yang banyak <laughs> duit duit tu ya 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 so what you can do is that um, try to uh, get the back with your team and okay. um, discuss on the packages let's say sekarang ni prototype yang dah ready is only rush right okay. yeah yeah uh, and for you to wait um, to find that specific owner yang nak buat um, only fish feed susah kan okay? mm. kan susah ni But mm. untuk cari owner yang dah ada pelan ikan, yang nak mm. sustain je mm. So try mm. to go uh, to them first And mm. then um, if you wanna be more creative, try to be like Huawei Which means you orang akan datang, maybe like your case in 3 uh, months We are going to service our system, our system mm. Faham mm. tak? Those kind of things Be But creative on that side Jangan, yeah. sebab aku tak nak nanti sebab One fine day, akan ada orang yang keluar dengan sistem Kalau korang yeah. nak So okay. why why you need to test it now because uh, kalau boleh minggu ni kau search je mana-mana orang yang nak benda ni pitch kat mm. orang benda ni and then mm. let's say they agree to that price okay bincang dengan team orang berapa kos buat dalam sistem nak run mm. dia through a month uh, tengok mm. semua cost ada specific semua and bagi that uh, special price to your mm. first customer okay mm. dah siap tu and then only you can go maybe you can go plus to college uh, college pula to jabatan perikanan mm-hmm. which they have like lots of database there yeah betul that's the first step that you can go second step you can go is go global which you can just go to indonesia or um, brunei mana-mana just sell them mm-hmm. this system mm-hmm. and i believe you can start from there so yeah. um don't wait lah okay so that's that will be my um, suggestion don't wait so one fine day orang akan buat Ya. Ini semua eh atau masih yang belakang-belakang yang bahagian uh, <laughs> that numbers is discussing. Yeah. <laughs> Aku kan nak tengok malam. Ya 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 ya. Eh, if possible okay. kalau kata dah jumpa that one person yang setuju nak buat benda tu, ambil gambar step progress, ambil video buat kita hmm. tengok. Hmm. Alright. Uh, so okay, thank you uh, so much. Uh, okay, sorry nak tambah juga. Basically, yeah. actually before uh, actually before we are starting our project ni pun sebenarnya like two one month ago kan like, before we are starting this project we have done all the validation like why why we go for fish seed sebenarnya sebab dia macam uh, memanglah kita tahu like that there, there's always a demand but where to get the demand so we are we always worry on that and then we go to the field and then ask the business owner and then somehow we get 
to we manage to get a, a really customer juga sebenarnya uh, hmm. dekat janda baik Pahang. Ada banyak dia dia macam dia produce more than 300 uh, I think the the capacity that they able to achieve on their production sebab dia punya tempat dia sangat luas. It has like three dia boleh buat dalam 300,000 fish in a month. Jadi they are having this this issue so we are actually doing this project and give, uh, we say that uh, we said to them kita kata macam okay once kita on the siap we are the one that we supply to your production hmm. so basically we already have that uh, just like you are, you already mentioned semua tu and then cuma uh, sekarang ni on rest uh, on business revenue sebenarnya we are looking forward for that we are to sell the system tapi we, Before that, we just want to macam kita nak we want to make the money as soon as possible. Jadi fish seed pun is actually our product, like the fish seed tu kita jual juga. Ya, ya. Tapi lah. pula uh, Adam, um, the the money yang paling depan adalah penjual orang yang bersangka tu, supply lu, okay? Hmm. Uh, let's say hmm. orang tu katakan dia boleh produce like um, maybe 10,000 fish dia sebulan hmm. What you can hmm. do is customize your package Okay, be be flexible lah eh, dalam bisnes korang Kalau kata orang tu dah ada 300 ribu fish boleh bagi setiap bulan kau janganlah bagi minum murah Alright? Ah, uh, yelah <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, good product guys, uh, good team okay. I hope you guys jadi kaya raya one day, thank you okay. right. thank, thank you from you. me, Adam and Vivian also Alright, thank you yeah. so much yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone else yang nak present? Rasa macam tak ada dah. Ada ke? Okay, I think if dah tak ada, that will conclude our Malam Merdeka. Patut pergi tengok konsert tapi lain korang. <laughs> tak ada rasa boleh lah. Buka kamera semua je. Aku nak buat something. Nak puaskan hati sebab so tak tengok Malam Merdeka. Right. Buka kamera semua, buka kamera, buka kamera. Aha, okay, jom. Vivian memang tak buka kamera. Jerudin, Hafizuddin, Najmuddin. Ah, oh, okay, jom. Right guys, boleh buka mic tak? Semua orang buka mic. So aku macam nak buat benda ni dengan orang ramai tapi dapat dengan korang aja kan. So kita buat sama-sama lah. Sebagai esok Merdeka, uh, aku akan laungkan Merdeka tiga kali korang sama boleh eh? Boleh tak? Nak minta bantuan korang semua. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Boleh, boleh eh? Aina tak, like, tak buka mic lagi. Jeremy tak buka mic lagi. Oh. Ay, tadi boleh. Bapak scam kan? <laughs> okay. Alright. Uh, let's do it. Okay. Satu, dua, tiga. Merdeka! Merdeka. Merdeka. Kali lagi. Okey. Ah uh, 1 2 3. Merdeka. 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 Guys, so uh, nanti kan recording tu hujung tu. Boleh tak dekat Instagram nanti. Okay, thank you so much guys for tonight. Hope you guys um have enjoyed um tadi ada share session and now kita ada this session and hope to see you guys soon with a better deck with the product and better quality. Thank you so much. My name is Ani Ambes. Sorry ada tersalah kata ke apa ke. Terjumpa lagi lain kali. Assalamualaikum dan selamat malam.